Hi, I'm Tristan from powerpedals.com, cardiocritic.com. This short video is to show you how simple it is to install the 4i power meter crank to your bike. This is the power meter crank arm I'm going to be fitting. As you can see, it's Shimano 105 branded. And this is the power meter technology on the back of the crank arm. The only tools hopefully I'm going to need is a hollow tip tuck Shimano extractor to remove the center bolt there, an 8mm Allen key and a 5mm Allen key. So fingers crossed this should take less than 5 minutes. Okay as you can see this is my old 105 crank arm. This is what I'm going to remove. I've already taken the pedal off. Remember this is on the left side so the pedal thread is reversed so it's the opposite to the normal to remove. So remove the pedal using my 8mm allen key. The next thing to do is to remove this central bolt here. That's just used to, to push the crank flush to the bottom bracket axle. It's not really what holds it on. What holds it on is these two bolts here. So this should just be hand tight. There are there is a chance it, it's not. If it's been over tightened, you might need to go to your local bike shop to get it off, or you might need to buy uh, a, a more um, advanced tool, possibly with a hand line to give some leverage. But for me, this metal one, which I got from Evan Cycles for about four pounds, is perfect. So now this isn't reverse threaded, so that's just anti-clockwise to remove this. They are plastic and it might be that it gets a bit messed up and for the sake of a few pounds it's possibly worth just changing that while you're doing this. Then with your 5mm allen key you need to undo these retaining bolts here. Once they're loose the crank arm should just come off. You'll notice there's a little blast plastic shim here. That's something that your new crank will have and something you need to make sure it doesn't get snagged when you're putting it back putting the new one on. So there's the old one and here's the new one. This is a little plastic that needs to sit in there and I need to make sure that is there. What I'm going to do here now is just going to put excuse me, just going to put this bolt in place just so it goes through the plastic shim so I know it's in place. Just loosely. Okay. So that one's in there. Let's do the same on this side. Just a couple of turns. Okay, so the shim is in place. Now it's just a matter of positioning it. Obviously, in horizontal line with the existing crank. You might note you might have noticed your bottom back bottom back my actual position of it so push that through to make sure that's in the right place then just put your hollow tech on there now this is only supposed to be hand tight now that is something that I will emphasize because you say this does not hold the crank arm on. If this was meant to be really tight, they wouldn't make it out of plastic. Okay, so that's now in place. Now this is the important bit now. 
make sure that shim is in place and pushed up to the bolt there. Now just quickly tighten them up very lightly until they both hit the point of resistance. And now it's important that you do them both in turn. I'm going to do about quarter to half a turn on each one. Will be a specific setting for each crank arm, which you can, you know, you can look in your manual to find what that is. Uh, I'm just doing it pretty tight. Okay, so that's now on. Now it's just a matter of putting the pedal back on. All the dries greasing that. again tighten to the required resistance and that's it my new power meter is installed and ready to go okay so that's now found the pedal it shows me in the app here it's useful because it shows me the percentage of battery 92 percent remember you can get about 200 hours of power metering from the cr2032 lithium coin cell in the power meter um, it tells me the version of the firmware and the serial number now, importantly i've got third party apps on there um, if you don't do that if you're using it to some devices like the garmin you'll get accurate at power straight away because it knows it's a single-sided power meter um, when I first used it in my Sunto it was doubling the power but setting this here now it works fine so I get the same power output on the app as I do in my other um, test units if there was needed to be some new firmware update that would be done over the air and that would be sent to the power meter via the uh, um, app as well so this this is a good feature it keeps it future proof and it means any bug fixes or improvements can be sent to the um, power meter from your phone. Okay, so that's the first thing you must do after you put the power meter on, get the 4i Precision app, and then um, just go through the installation and setup there. So I'm gonna just run through pairing these power, the 4i power meter with some popular meters i've got the polar m450 an older garmin edge 800 a garmin edge 820 and a sunto spartan ultra okay we'll start with the um garmin edge this is a garmin edge 820 just go into the menu down there for your settings pop to settings go to sensors add sensor Move to power. Now it's already found it straight away. Um, if it hadn't, I might have just had to spin the pedal. Press add. And that's it in there already. Now, one of the great features of the Edge 820 is I can very quickly, let's just go into train. Now, if you didn't have the power settings in there, you can just Press and hold a field, select the power metric you want, and then that data field will show that information. So, for example, percentage of FTP. Some of the features in there you won't get from this power meter, so you won't get things like um, power phase 
and left and right balance obviously so this this is going to give me total power which is a uh, doubled average of, you know, of of one the left power doubled basically and um, I can obviously use FTP I like to use 10 second and 30 second average as well okay so that's how simple it is in the Garmin Edge 820 okay so now let's have a look at the um, Sunto this is a Sunto Spartan Ultra let's go into settings down to connectivity pair sensor pair power pod and it's found one there simple as that so again what you'd need to do now in um, Sunto moves count you need to set up so you've got the correct data fields something I've already done here I have a uh, power meter set in there so power on my display already okay so now let's just pair the 4i precision parameter with my Polar M450 obviously these are also compatible these 4i precision with the new Polar M460 so we just pop down to settings, go to general settings, pair and sync, pair other. It doesn't come up straight away, there it is. If it hadn't come up, I'd just pin the pedal to wake the pedals up. Say yes. Pairing completed. That's how easy it is. On this one, I have to then allocate it to a bike. I'm going to allocate it to my bike one. It also tells me there that the crank length, that is correct, it's a 172.5 and that's it, ready to go. So just like the um, any other unit, you're going to have to then go into your um, settings on, on the Polar Flow website and enable a power meter view so when I'm training I can see power in, in my views. Okay. So this is them, the 4i precision power meter, an absolute doddle to install, took me less than 8 or 10 minutes, compatible with Bluetooth and Ant Plus head units, obviously also compatible with iPhone and Android power meter apps, um, highly recommended, adding power to your ride used to be something reserved for elites and pros but now as you can see even for something like an old Garmin Edge 800 you can get power on there for a very reasonable price.